Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk HP Lovecraft and Let's Talk Short Fiction. Uh, it is Black Friday, so let's do something black at the heart, and that is, of course, the short stories of HP Lovecraft. Uh, won't be out doing any uh, any capitalism today. No shopping for me, but uh, we'll be home with a good a good short story today on a good cold day. So uh, uh, today's story is Dagon, written in July 1917. It's one of his very first stories written as an adult. It wasn't published until 1919 in The Baker, and then later in uh, an edition of Weird Tales. Uh, our narrator is a morphine addict, recalling a time during World War I when he was uh, aboard a, a merchant um, cargo ship. Uh, it was overtaken by Germans. He slipped away on a raft and drifted for days. Uh, delirious, he finally lands on an island, <coughs> a slimy, decaying, disgusting, fish gut smelling island that should not be there. Uh, it is not on any maps. Uh, he theorizes that it was lifted up from the surf, uh, the, from the floor of the ocean by, um, by like seismic activity. Um, he, he waits a couple days, I think it's three days, for the island to begin to dry, become stable enough for him to walk on. Uh, he packs a few things from his raft and he begins his exploration. Um, the island seems to be mainly set up like a plain, it's a big flat area, but in the center he comes across this sort of giant crevasse, this canyon or this hole. And in the middle of it is this weird stone monolith. He goes down to explore it and he finds that it is covered in a sort of hieroglyphic glyphic language, you know, so it's um, depicting things in, um, in images. Um, it seems to see a lot of normal sea life, uh, crustaceans and um, octopuses and things like that. Um, but there's also humanoids, uh, for all intents and purposes, beings that look like humans. But they have webbed fingers, webbed toes, and they are depicted as being huge. Uh, one of them is doing combat with a whale, uh, and he looks like he's as big as the whale. Excuse me. And while he's there watching, <coughs> looking, um, something slowly disturbs the dark water around the around the stone monolith. Um, and here comes a honest to goodness real uh, sea monster. Uh, he describes it as being Polyphemus like. Um, Polyphemus from mythology is one of the sons of Poseidon. Uh, he was humanoid, but he had scaly arms. Um, absolutely horrified and traumatized by what he sees. He retreats to his raft and is set adrift again. Uh, the next time we see him, uh, just moments later, so just literally in the space of the sentence, uh, he's in San Francisco. He wakes up in a hospital. Um, he heals and he begins listening and talking with other people. Um, there's no reports of any weird seismic activity, what would explain the island lifting up from the bottom of the sea. Um, then he later talks to um, an ethnologist who he describes as being completely unimaginative. And um, he talks to him about the ancient uh, Philistine legend or god of Dagon, um, who was considered a fish god to, to the Philistines. Um, but traumatized by his experience, he becomes addicted to morphine, um, and he's reached a point where no amount of morphine is going to settle his mind to allow him to sleep and allow him to have rest. And as he is there uh, telling this story to us, uh, he hears something at the, uh, at the door, something sounds slimy and groping and reaching. Presumably, Dagon has come for him. Uh, in that way, the story is essentially a suicide note, but it's not clear whether he's is he intentionally killing himself or is he expecting to be die to be dead from being hunted down or from his addiction? Um, that's not exactly clear to me. Um, I think um, to me, one of the coolest thing or the best things that Lovecraft does here is he immediately at the beginning of the story he. He mentions the morphine, and I think that makes the the character an unreliable witness, which means effectively that can we trust what he's saying? Is this story true? Um, he seems to believe it, but is he um, just a madman, a drug addict, um, hallucinating? We don't know. Um, 
Also working for this story is the fact that it is so short. It's one of his very early works. Um, but it's also, I would say, one of his best. Uh, he's writing younger. I think he was, probably wasn't so clouded by expectation and, and all these things and influences. Uh, so I think it's really a pure story. It's a pure, simple, un... Um, it's not so decadent. It's not trying to reach beyond his ability to tell the story. I think it fits within his skill set. Um, that Lovecraft, that is. Uh, so it, I find it to be one of his best. Um, another interesting thing, and I'll leave you with this, is um, Dagon, or Dagon, um, the deity that he mentions here, is actually, as I was saying, uh, he's a historical, a historical creature. Um, let me see if I can pull up the uh, Wikipedia right here. Uh, Dagon um, is an ancient Mesopotamian and ancient Canaanite deity. He appears to have been worshipped as a fertility god in Ebla, Assyria, o Ugarit, and among the Amorites. Uh, the Hebrew Bible mentioned him as the national god of the Philistines with temples at Ashad and elsewhere in Gaza. A long-standing association with Canaanite word for fish. Perhaps going back to the Iron Age has led to the interpretation of him as a fish god. Um, and the association with uh, mermaids, um, which is a common motif in Assyrian art. Um, <clears throat> a Dagon relief found by Austin Henry Lanard in 1840s is the one that um, associates him with the merman. Uh, the god's name, however, was more likely derived from a word for grain, suggesting that he was an origin associated with fertility and agriculture. Um, see, what's different here is... We all, I think, if you're reading uh, Lovecraft, you've heard about his whole, um, you know, the Cthulhu mythos, um, the, the, the old ones, the great old ones, um, all these, this universe of ancient deities and, and uh, alien beings that he created. Um, but here we go. Uh, he's actually referencing a, not historical figure, because he's obviously probably not real, but a figure from our history. Um, but I think this uh, definitely is a precursor to Cthulhu, um, the idea of an island rising up out of the, the ocean floor. I mean, that goes right to the story of Cthulhu that he's going to write a few years later down the road. So um, this story, obviously um, important to the, the development of Lovecraft, of his mythology, and of what that ultimately came to make him such a unique uh, figure in literature. And I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> yeah, guys, this is a really good one. Um, it's only two or three pages. Let me pull it up here. Uh... Yeah, so... It is... This page... It's back, that page, and half of this page. So it is a it is a very compact story. But compact stories can often be the the hardest ones to write because you don't have so much space to um, to really dally along. So um, yeah, guys, uh, this has been Let's Talk Short Fiction and Let's Talk H. P. Lovecraft. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, you're probably in the middle of your long weekend right now, as I am. Uh, if that's the case, uh, pull open a, a volume of Lovecraft and enjoy. Uh, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.